Welcome, I'm Friar Tuck, this is my epoch, and uh, I've been chronically homeless for the last 25 years. If you are one of those people that are looking at the homeless crisis and the level at which it's expanding, not to mention the amount of money that the government is throwing at it and thinking, man, I'd love to throw my hat into, uh, uh, into the ring and see if I can do anything to, be, uh, to, to help in homelessness. Uh, these are some five things that you should definitely consider if you are going to go down this path before you actually go down and start filing your paperwork and start writing your mission statement and all that other stuff. This is probably the first five things things that you should consider before even offering any type of services to the homeless. So the first thing that you really want to consider is you got to put yourself in a homeless person's shoes. Uh, by the time the average person becomes homeless, uh, they have gone through all of their savings so they have no money. Uh, they are generally single. Uh, they have generally burned bridges because they were couch surfing, staying with friends and family. Um, and they pretty much have the clothes on their back because through attrition and the time and the backslide to become homeless, they, they lost everything uh, in that whole backslide. And so when they come out and they start seeing you, um, that is where you have the opportunity to make the first impact within the homeless community. And so there are different schools of thought on how you can, on how you can do this. But one of the things that I would really like to point out is that if you're going to actually make a dent in homelessness, you have to be able to rehouse and put those that were or, uh, that, that are just coming out back into a place and back into being a productive member of society first before you start working on the existing population. Otherwise, the population will continue to grow. And you know, unless you just want like endless customers and you don't really want to solve the issue, you're going to see the inherent flaw in this. So this is also another thing for you to consider. Now, there are two different types of services that you can offer. And this is my own personal definition, because as I've sat back and I've dissected this down to its simplest form, I find that there are two types of services. There are those that sustain like food, shelter, uh, clothes, uh, gear, stuff like that. That's, that's sustaining. And then you have services that uh, are geared and designed towards ending homelessness and you know being a, a, an effective service. And if you're really wanting to make a dent in homelessness, I think that both are equally important because if you don't have uh, the sustaining services, the effective services are really not going to be as effective because what ends up happening is if you don't have your basics taken care of, you can't move past uh, past getting your basics and spending your whole day toiling for your basics. Uh, you can't get past that to actually do anything effective that's going to get you off of the streets. So just because you think that you're doing, you know, sustaining services and stuff like that, uh, I would like to remind you that you are just as important. You are, are a very important part of the uh, solving homelessness. Don't think that you're anything less just because you are offering sustaining services. Okay. And then, you know, you got your effective services. We're talking, you know, like digital economy, stuff like that. So let's talk about number three, which is diving a little bit deeper into what sustainable services are. The weather is constantly changing. Gear does not last very long out here. Gear is generally cheap and we're getting the hand-me-downs, the factory defects and all that other stuff. So don't ever expect anything to last long. What you really want to start focusing on is making sure that, you know, they have the essential gear, which is something to sleep in, uh, you know, whether it be a sleeping bag or a quilt like what I have. Uh, you know, it just depends upon what you're able to get. And then there's also other different types of blankets for different types of weather that you can that you can deal with. Some of it you can get off of Amazon and some of it you you just got to kind of make on your own. Uh, and there are different, definitely different tutorial videos out there about this. OK, so making sure that they have something to sleep in and something to carry it and that they have the ability to get that replaced. The average, the average homeless person could use a 40 to 65 liter backpack, depending upon if they're urban, if they're in a rural area, or if they are living on trail, okay? And you've also got to realize that a large section of 
the homeless population is transient. They're moving from place to place for various reasons. So being able to have access to food, access to showers, access to laundry, access to medical care, access to a pharmacy, these are all extremely, extremely important. Uh, one of the biggest uh, things that I have trouble getting especially considering I need it it's part of the reason why I'm losing my teeth is because I can't get access to dental care and not being able to get access to dental care you know leaves it so that I now have to deal with more infections I have to deal with uh, faster tooth decay and things like that so these sustainable services will help a person not only keep their dignity but be able to get their basics because as a human your right to life is to eat sleep drink uh, use the bathroom you know, breathe air, and if you are providing those uh, those essential services for the homeless community, you're going to be making a huge impact because I think that this is the biggest part of where the services right now fall short is that when when they're offering it, it's spotty. It depends upon the city. Uh, it depends upon you know access to gear. Sometimes you got to be in these special programs to get anything worthwhile and things like that. And so therefore it's restricted access to any quality gear or to any gear at all, uh, unless you're just getting clothes. And some of the clothes that they give us out here are great if you live indoors. Cotton is great if you live indoors, but if you live outdoors, you need something that is moisture wicking. You need something that can dry. You need something that can keep its heating qualities like wool, no matter the bacteria or how wet it gets. Okay, so these are things that the homeless community needs. If you're really trying to fill a gap, these are some gaps in which you can start looking at in your local homeless community. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about uh, number four, which is what are effective services, okay? So let's say you decide, you know what, there's a lot already going on in my city that is doing uh, that, that's doing the sustaining services. I want to actually, you know, my, my ego says I want to uh, be part of the solution to end homelessness, okay? And so just as critical as the, uh, as the, the sustaining services are, the effective services, you guys really need to hone in what it is that you're really offering. You need to really uh, define it down to the nth degree and have a program and then also be able to measure your metrics, okay? Because uh, it's not... It's it's not about, okay, well, we had 500 homeless people, we got 200 of them off the streets, so therefore we reduced homelessness by this much, even though it really expanded by this much, because, you know, the numbers the numbers aren't correct. I mean, we get to see this all across uh, the any type of government reports we get now, including the jobs numbers, inflation, cost of living, all that stuff, it's, it's, not, it's not accurate. And I would say that, that some of these numbers, even within the homeless community and the homeless industrial complex are not accurate. So what you should really be focusing on is looking at those people that come out that have that, that still have the ability to quickly reintegrate into the system, which means, you know, whether getting them gainful employment, whether it be finding them affordable housing, you know, stuff like that. And these this is the group in which you want to make sure that you focus a good amount of your efforts on because help those that can be helped, that want to be helped, and those that don't want to be helped or can't be helped let them be taken care of by the sustaining services because if you really want to be able to get people off of the streets you have to and end homelessness you have to catch them when they first come on because the average person when they come out that is when they've got the most energy um, that's when they are the most optimistic that is when they can they, they see a way out the longer that you're out here the, the the dimmer those lights get so being able to catch somebody as they come maybe make sure to give them get them a bed in the shelter make sure to you know help them you know get back on their feet in the way in which they need but see stuff like this needs to be tailored to the actual individual okay and so therefore you may have to have a plethora of programs or be part of a network to be able to make sure that okay we've got them their sustaining services they need their shoes they need they need a pair of interview clothes because these this person wants to go get a a brick and mortar job but you also because the way the economy is is changing one of the biggest problems that we're having out here is if you're like me and you want to get into the digital economy because quite frankly that is the economy of the future if you want to be able to get into the economy um 
uh, the, the digital economy, you, you struggle because most of these programs want you to go apply at McDonald's. They want you to go apply at Barnes and Noble, Starbucks and all that place just to go get a quick job just to, you know, so that you can say you got a job so that they can check a box. But is it actually effectively, you know, helping this person create a foundation to where when, when they actually get it all together, that the likelihood of them returning back to this lifestyle uh, is very small, let's say less than a 20% chance. At that point in time, then you've effectively ended that person's homelessness and you could take those programs and you can take that, that whole process and you can start um, applying it in like a mass production way and through through competition all of this will will end up being picked up across the board because the thing is when we find organizations that can actually get it done fully together that's the reason why right now Houston is the poster child for housing first because they're basically housing everybody that's that's what they're saying they're doing and stuff like that now we don't know if that's actually true uh, housing first has actually been perverted in a lot of ways it's gone against the original founder what he wanted it to do um, but if you are looking for effective ways to be able to, you know, be effective in your homeless services, this is the come from that you've got to come from. Okay, so that means you have to be open to the digital economy. You have to be understanding of how the digital economy works so that you can advise these people so that you can take people that may not be able to have a very productive life working at McDonald's, but you know, they're very artistic. So teaching them how to use Fiverr and how to use Upwork, you know, so that they can therefore sell their designs and they can have a better quality of life. And so therefore homelessness can benefit some people and move them in a proper direction to where they can actually have a strong foundation. And see, this is where you've got to be creative and you've got to start looking at ways to where you can create a foundation for this individual on an individual level to where moving forward they can face different crisis and not crack under pressure or whatever it was that led them down that road what it maybe it uh, took too high of a risk made a bad decision uh had uh life's consequences happen too quick uh you know things like that if you if you actually help an individual instead of enable them and tell them oh poor you um you will have more effective results okay number five is getting your community involved how are you going to get your community involved uh, to be able to support your cause, okay? And uh, what what places can you go, what things can you do, things like this. Now, I'm giving a little bit of my sales background and plus, you know, I get to talk to uh, other not-for-profits and they've asked my, my input and my advice. And if that's something that you would like, feel free to reach out to me, Friar Tuck at hobotuck.com. And I'd be more than happy to answer your questions, connect with you and, and stuff like that. But if you're wanting to make local uh, connections within your community, you know, the going to flea markets, paying $20, $30 for a booth and to be able to have a, an opportunity to engage with people, maybe show, share with them how you're, you're doing it. Because not only do you want to expand uh, your, your brand name, uh, uh, your, your knowledge of your service to uh, people within the community so that they can advise the homeless in which they know. Um, you, you want to be able to possibly pick up donations, be able to network within your community and find useful resources because, you know, as people are going through on their weekend, you know, you're sitting there at a booth at a flea market, you can do the same thing in front of a store. Um, you know, maybe even do like a raffle or a giveaway or something like that. Something simple just to gain curiosity, notoriety, get, you know, maybe even create an email list, okay, from something like that. But if that's if you're going to stay in the local community, um, you know, because once you start getting national, you, you lose... Uh, you lose the autonomy because you now have to cookie cutter. You want people to adopt your program uh, to their uh, cultural needs. Uh, you don't want them to just, you know, we're going to do it exactly like this because, you know, each region, each culture has its, its own place. And this is something that you should also be thoughtful about as well, especially if you're designing something that you think should be adopted across, um, across the board. Okay, so you know, just going to different groups, uh, you know, you can go to BNI groups, you can go to meetup groups, you can go to the Chamber of Commerce. Um, there's a lot of different places where you can network not only within the business community, but you can also network within um, within your local community, like going to community uh, community centers and stuff like that. Or whenever there is uh, you know public events, making sure to go there and and kind of having a booth there. That way you get your local notoriety, and as people see you going around, 
and they constantly see you all over the place, it gives you credibility. And, and this will, will help you get your community involved, okay? Well, thanks for watching. And if you like this video and you would kind of like to know about the problems within the homeless industrial complex, if, especially if you're gonna start a not-for-profit, you should probably watch this video right here. Uh, and that will kind of share with you the uphill battle you will be facing should you decide to get into the homeless industrial complex.